Now that we have altered the value, so the lightness and darkness of a color, what we want to do next is adjust the intensity or the brightness of a color. So there are several ways to dull down a color. One of the ways is actually to add black to it, but that will also make it darker. So a good way to do that is to use gray or the complement, the opposite on the color wheel. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do both of these. So the first one is going to be using blue and we're going to add gray to it. So what you will want to do is to make about a 50% gray. So how do you decide if it's 50% gray? One of the things I often do will just do a Google internet search for 50% gray so that I can compare my color to it. For those who are in my classroom, I'll have an example of it on the screen and you can try to match it as best you can. The thing you don't want to do is to make it too dark because if you make it dark, it not only dulls, but it also darkens. And if you make it too light, it lightens and, dark and um, dulls. So we want to do kind of a true 50%. If you wanted to do both. So if you wanted to darken and dull, you could use gray. When I'm making a gray tone, I use it mostly for um, colors that are a little pasty. Um, so hopefully once we uh, see what that looks like, you'll get kind of an idea of what I mean. So in the first section, we're gonna go ahead and paint in the blue. So use good brush technique as, as good as you can. Nice chiseled color. And then we'll allow that to dry. And while that's drying, I can go ahead and make my first dull color. So the goal of this one is not to make the color turn gray, but it still should remain bluish. So um, let's do this maybe too. Let's make sure there's no streaks in our gray. And let's just go ahead and paint in our gray so we can see what that gray looks like by itself. So when I'm mixing in the gray, I'll want to do a little at a time. And we want to make sure that we have a difference in each of the blues that we make. Okay, but we want it to always remain bluish. So I'm going to go ahead and let's see, I'm going to wipe my brush. This is something I do. Use a paper towel, wipe it, get off some of that gunky paint. I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of the blue off to the side. And I'm just going to add a touch of the gray to it and stir it up. I can use my palette knife. I can use my brush. I just want to make sure that if I use my brush, that I maybe take off some of the paint. So I kind of tap it to get some of that off so I get a nice chisel. All right, I still want it to be nice and flat so I can then pull the color. So you want the color to look different than the first one. So I think it looks a little bit lighter here, probably because there's white in the gray but it also looks a little bit duller. So you just wanna make sure that you see a difference. And it doesn't have to be drastic for the first one, but there should be a difference. All right, so then we'll do it again. Maybe I just wipe the brush this time, add a little bit more gray and stir. Now, if you feel like you went too far too fast, you could always grab a little bit more of the blue and put it back in. Stir, stir, stir. I made these spots a little bit bigger too, right? Not as small as the white one. So I can use my brush to pull it across straight there, but I also can pull it down. Here you can see the color is getting a little bit more pasty. It's getting grayed out. The color is no longer as vivid and bright. So grab some more color. Okay, 
So I'm just going to go ahead and finish that one. If you got the drift of it, you can go ahead and start working on this one. I'll finish this out just so that if you want to watch along, you can. streaks. I just put too much but paint on my bristles. I didn't need to clean it so let me get free of some of this. Last one, a little bit more grain. Stir, stir, stir. There's a lot of white in here, so it's probably only going to need one coat because it's so opaque. go from blue to gray dulling down the colors.